you know, both my parents were alcoholics, so it's not like I'm against drinking, it's just the, the way they behaved at that point was kind of abusive, and kind of was very abusive, and so I didn't want to be part of that. Uh, but we all want to be able to change the way we feel, that's what I spend my life showing people how to do. And what most people don't know is the emotion is created by motion. The way you move determines the way you feel. You have 80 different muscles in your face, 80. For most people, this is the largest area of unemployment in the country. <laughs> they use their ma the face the same way, they feel the same emotions over and over and over again. So what I was saying is, I have this deal with myself called priming. Every day, I say, look, you gotta have 10 minutes for yourself. If you don't have 10 minutes for yourself, you don't have a life. And I'm not gonna hope I feel good. I, don't, I just got back uh, six countries in 12 days. I was in India two days ago. Wow. And I woke up here and went like, feeling like somebody ran me over with a truck. You know? <laughs> but and you I, got yourself psyched up. But the, but the way I did it is I do this process. And it's 10 minutes, I put some music on, I do this massive change in my breathing, so it radically changes the way I feel. And then I do this three-step process. First, I do three minutes of gratitude, where I think of three things I'm really grateful for, and I associate, I don't think of it over there, I feel it. And the reason is, when you're grateful, you can't be worried. You can't be fearful. When you're grateful, you can't be angry. And anger and fear are what screw people up most in their relationships, in their life, in their business. So I wire myself. I was saying to you that most people want to be happy, but their habit is to be worried or pissed off or frustrated or stressed. And so they're, they've got a highway to stress and they got a dirt road to happiness. So I wire myself. I've got a highway to gratitude, which changes all your emotions. And then I do a three minute process of kind of a prayer for my family and friends. And then I do a three minute process of the top three things I want to accomplish. I see it as done and I feel it. I'm done in 10 minutes. So sometimes I go 20. But my deal is 10, so there's no excuse not to do it. You know what? I think it's a great way to kind of set the tone for it, the day. It does. It, cha it changes. Listen, we've all had times when you snapped at somebody and you felt bad because it wasn't them. It was the state you're in, right? Well, there's no excuse for that. If you prime yourself, you set yourself up. They've done studies where they go to people and they have a man walk up to you and say, could you hold this for me? Hand you a cup of coffee. It's an actor. And then he takes it, takes them out of his pocket. Then he takes it back and says, thank you. 100 people, they do it with iced coffee. 100 people do with hot coffee. 45 minutes later, another actor comes by and says, listen, we're doing this little test for $5. Would you read this three paragraphs and answer three questions? Most people say yes. It's a little story. The questions are about the character. What's the character like? 80% of the people that got iced coffee say the person is cold and mean. Wow. 81% of the people that got hot coffee say the person is warm and gentle or nice. That's how much we can be primed by our environment. We think we're just feeling what we're feeling, but our environment, if we don't take control of our environment, it takes control of us. Goal, if you own a business, and I would assume a lot of your viewers are business yeah. owners or are getting started in business, no matter how good you are in business, think about this. The one universal rule that idiots in finance know is diversification. It's the only free lunch. You've got to diversify. Because if you put all your eggs in one basket, no matter how good the basket is, one day that real estate market, that stock market, that bond market, that collectibles market, whatever you invest in, Ray Dalio showed me statistically, it'll drop 50 to 70% on a day. Now, if you're later in life and that happens, it's over for you. Right. So you have to diversify, and yet most people, they know real estate, so they do it, or they know stocks, so they do it, or they grew up with their, hand, their parents flipping things, and it's the wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. So you've got to diversify in order for you to be able to truly succeed, and that's why when you own a business, yeah. if you put all your money in your business, which is what most of us do naturally, <laughs> you see a lot of risk. Yeah. You put all your eggs in one basket, and risk. there's things that can happen. I mean. You know, you're, let's say you spent 20 years and you figured out how to put together the ultimate map, you know, and you remember Garmin came out with this thing called the Tom Tom. I don't know if you remember, you used to yeah. put on your, are you old enough to remember that? You used of to course. put on your phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you used to put on your dash. Um, the dash. Yeah, yeah. Cost a hundred bucks. Yeah. It was a breakthrough. They were making like a hundred million or something. Or, yeah, they, they were. were. Yeah, yeah. Six months later, what happened? The iPhone came out with That's Google right. Maps. <laughs> These little bastards, excuse my French, came out with it, put Google Maps, put their own map on here, and it costs how much? Zero. What's that gonna do to your business when someone takes your product or serve and gives away for free? So I always tell people, competition happens, mm -hmm. technology happens, what you must do is have a second business with, yeah. no, with no moving parts, no people, no time. Maybe it takes you Two, two, three days a year for two or three hours after you've read the book, mm -hmm. you put it in place and you measure it two or three times yeah. a year. That's it. Yeah. Go on with your life. Now if there's a trouble in your business, you're financially set. I, in my life, have 31 companies now. We have, wow. you know, what do we have? 1,200 employees, seven different industries. We do five billion in sales. Yeah. I mean, I, that used to be, 
you know, me and my seminar business, it's grown geometrically. Wow. But with all those moving parts, the only way I've been able to succeed is because I've taken every one of those businesses and I've diversified my assets so that when things were in trouble, I still had enough economics to take care of myself and keep the business going. So everybody needs to create a money machine that works while you sleep, that doesn't have moving parts, and that's what this is really about. Named Ken Blanchard, who wrote those books called the One Minute Manager books. And he said to me very early in my life, he said, Tony, he said, uh, a business will always consume whatever's available. And he said, I see you're coming out with your first book. I was 24, it was Unlimited Power. And he goes, You're coming out with this book. I think it's going to be a big success. Do not put that money in your business. Take that money and put it into a separate investment account that nobody else touches. He said, I'm telling you, the business will get all the benefit of all the media, of all the things that come to it, but the actual dollars of that should stay out. He said, the same thing when I had an infomercial. He said, you know, take that money and put it aside. Well, it was one of the best advice I ever got in my entire life because I put it aside and, and there were times when that money was needed. But I was like putting it in a, in a chapel. It was like putting it where it was sacred money and it was not going to be touched. If someone came along and said, you have no money for your business, but guess what? A well, mama just raised the taxes 20% more for your business. You'd scream, you'd yell, you'd be upset, and you'd pay it. So why not put your family first? Why not have a portion of what you own, or what you earn, I should say, for yours to keep? It doesn't go to Kate Spade. <laughs> it doesn't go to Wall Street. It goes to your family. And the way you do that is you tax yourself. It's a wealth tax. You go, that's my freedom fund. And that comes off the top, and the secret is automated so you don't see it. That's really the most important. Very often, you're getting what you're asking for. You're just not aware of how general you're asking. Clarity is power. The more clear you are about exactly what it is you want, the more your brain knows how to get there. Your brain is a servo mechanism. It's like a bomb. Those bombs, those missiles, they have a servo mechanism. So if the target moves, it knows what the target is. It follows it. Your brain, when you condition it, knows exactly what to go for, and it'll find a way to get there. Do you ever buy a certain outfit or a certain car and suddenly see that car outfit everywhere? How many of you ever had that experience? Say, aye. How come that car outfit's everywhere? It always was everywhere, but now you notice it. And the reason is because there's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system, the RAS. That part of your brain determines what you notice and what you don't notice. Your brain spends most of its time trying to make sure you don't notice because you'll go crazy if you notice everything. But when you decide what's most important to you, your brain goes after it. Everyone I know who's successful builds what I call an RPM plan. An RPM is built on the metaphor that the way to get from where you are to where do you want to go to the fastest is you've got to build power, like in a car, RPMs. And the R stands for they know the result they're after. They know what they want precisely. If you don't know exactly what you want or you let yourself get beyond that into something general, you're not going to achieve it. Clarity is power. You've got to know the specific result you're after. What do you want? You can't answer that question right now in your personal life, in your body, in your relationships, in your finances, in your spirituality, then you're not going to be as fulfilled as you want to be. Here's my assignment for if you want one. If you want to go from conversation to some action, here's a simple thing to do. What's an area of your life right now that you really want to improve? What's an area that's important to improve? If your body's great, how about your career? If career's great, how about your relationships? Intimate one especially, or your kids, or your relationship with your creator, spiritual side of your life. Or is it your finances? Figure an area that really matters. Decide on that area. Number one, write down what your life is like in that area right now as specifically as possible. So you might say, well, I'm 13.5 pounds overweight, <laughs> you know, whatever the weight is, whatever the situation is, or my body fat's like this, or I'm I wake up exhausted in the morning. And you write the truth of where you are right now. So you're real clear. Or I'm not in a relationship. I say I want a relationship, but I, I'm not in one. And I don't seem to find them. All the good ones seem to be gone is my belief. You know, and I, and I really do want one, but I don't have it. Whatever your definition, I'm in a relationship and God, I wish I wasn't in a relationship. <laughs> I'm planning my escape, wherever you are. Or I have a lo wonderful relationship. We love each other, but there just isn't enough passion. Just write the truth of where you are. The area you want to change, but write how it is. And then the second step is, this is where you got to be really honest with yourself. What are the rituals that have put me there? Because whatever results you're getting, even if you don't like the results, there's some rituals that are keeping you in that place. There's some rituals of what you eat or don't eat, how you move or don't move, how you sleep or don't sleep. There's some rituals in the lack of variety or spice or energy or focus in an area. There's something you're doing, and it's usually not one thing, it's a bunch of little things 
that you kind of do consistently. Whenever you think about getting in a relationship, whenever you think about working out, whenever you think about money, you get yourself in a state of overwhelm. You start thinking about all the things you can't control. Just write down all the rituals you have, and then here's the third step. What do you want? What's your vision? And be really specific. I want to be my fighting weight. I want to be the strongest I've ever felt. I want to be, I'm going to turn my, whatever it is, be specific. And then, last step number four, what are the rituals that'll get you there? What would you need to do differently each morning if you're going to be that kind of energy, that kind of strength? How would you have to, how often would you work out? What days would you work out? What time? A ritual is something you do consistently, usually at a specific time, so it becomes automatic. Let me tell you something. Willpower doesn't last, but rituals can last a lifetime. I bet you have some rituals in your life right now you've been doing for years, even though some of them don't serve you. I'm just saying wake yourself up. Make, if you want a new year and a new life, you don't need to start on January 1st. Start today. Start with this little video and just begin to see what happens and see how easy it is to just do a few little rituals. Don't do them all, just do two or three new things. And you know what happens? You'll get momentum. Because once you discipline yourself in one area of your life, you feel yourself doing it in other areas as well. And I always say something that my original teacher taught me, I always remind people, there's always two pains in life. There's the pain of discipline or there's the pain of regret. And discipline weighs ounces, as my friend Jim Rohn taught me, regret weighs tons. You don't have regret. So right now, what do you want to change? What's it really like? What are the rituals that got you there? That'll take a little homework. If you're not sure, ask the people around you. They'll tell you what your rituals are. What do I really want in depth? What are the rituals that'll get me there? And then get yourself to start a few of those actions and lock them in place.